What's up everybody, this is the one and only yours truly, Sugi JRPG, and today I will be reviewing no other than Final Fantasy XV, a game that we have been waiting close to 10 years now to be released, and it has changed quite a lot since the beginning, obviously it was supposed to be released on PS3, it was called Final Fantasy Versus, and the world was kind of different, it was more like a post apocalyptic setting and more, maybe more like a militaristic, like you could ride tanks and other stuff, and some of the characters were changed and altered, for example Prompto looked quite different in the beginning, and also the female main lead, Luna Freya, was called F Stella, and Stella was more of a, I would say, uh, more of a female warrior, and I think she played as an antagonist in the beginning, and I actually liked her design a lot more, but I think they wanted to move away from the female warrior type because they had, you know, previously on the previous title they had Lightning, who was very like a strong female lead. So maybe they wanted to have someone more fragile and then, you know, it was eventually evolved into Luna Freya. But let's talk about Final Fantasy XV, and uh, this review is a full game review where I played 60 hours of the game. Completed the main story, done a lot of side quests. I haven't done all the end game content though, so please be mind that that won't be really included on this review itself. But I'm gonna say that it, with the whole content in, with this, which is inside the game, plus the DLC that is coming, you could easily get 100 hours from this game if you want to go like full completionist. But let's talk about the game and some of the aspects of it. So in terms of the gameplay. The combat is actually pretty good. It doesn't get boring. It is very fun. There's a lot of variety with different weapons that you can use. Obviously in the beginning when I heard that you could only control Noctis and none of, none of the other characters in the game, I was a bit like, yeah, I had my doubts. But it turned out to be actually very fantastic. Uh, it's visually very appealing in terms of the combat and the world itself. But there are some few camera issues when you fight in the forest. Some of the trees will go you know will block the view of your character and the enemies so there are some slight camera issues but it doesn't really appear on like every stage it's really specific locations where you can meet the enemies but for the most part the camera works as it's intended unless you're warping around a lot and maybe it's not the most ideal but you can still figure out what's going on because the you know the damages and everything still look, like show on top and then you have a lot of like other aspects which is of course the one of the key selling points is the open world of this game you can uh, ride a chocobo you can drive a car and both of them have different perks the car can be even upgraded to actually fly at one point you can get like uh, a different upgrades for it like a fuel efficiency more speed to it that actually really cool thing that most of the car games out there don't actually have a fuel system. So it's actually really cool that they added a, a fuel system in this game. And I think it was really interesting. And the chocobos are obviously there. And the chocobo, like running around with the chocobo is really, really fun. Um, it is, you can glide with it, you can jump around. And there's even chocobo races that you can do, which have certain prices. You can customize your chocobo and the car, by the way. You can change the colors, you can add some metals to the uh, chocobo. As for the car, you can change the tires, the colors, the seatings. The, you can even add decals to the side of the cars. And it's actually very, very, um, very open world. And there's a lot of side quests inside the game. So actually the main story itself is not that long. And we'll be talking about that later. But you are supposed to do a lot of side quests. This is kind of like the Witcher 3 edition of a JRPG. You're supposed to do a lot of side quests. And um, you can do like hunts, there are a lot of um, dungeons that you can explore with bosses on the end. And then you have delivery quests, then you have to find certain ingredients. And obviously you have um, some of the other aspects of the game when it comes to mini games, you can cook in the game. And the cooking is very similar to Tales uh, series cooking system. So you are able to cook when you camp outside and this will give you certain buffs such as more experience, more health, more attack damage. Then are there are more specific dishes that will give you certain um, stat bonuses for maybe magic and then you maybe some like pizza will cure you from poison so you become immune for poison while the buffs are like there. And it's very like a very fun game. I mean the minigames are very really fun because 
with the cooking you are able to collect the recipes throughout the world you can buy them from certain shops you can see when you buy from a store you eat yourself uh, Ignis one of the main characters will learn the recipes when they see like other people eating food and then you can also like read some books or see p other people eat on the world and he will learn through that to do a lot of recipes and then there's obviously the other mini games as I already mentioned the chocobo then there's fishing the fishing is actually very fun you are able to collect throughout the world different like baits that you can use or lures whatever you want to call and these will affect in different fishing locations so some lures are really good against into certain fishes and then you're able to get a better rod certain uh, to certain mini games or you can buy them or complete quests and um, the fish will be you know part of them can be used in cooking obviously they can be sold some of them will lead to maybe perhaps into quests and other things and um, you're able to you know get also a string for the rod and there's a lot of like items that you can get for the whole fishing thing and it's actually quite depth and there's many fishing locations throughout the world some are easy to find some require maybe more like a bit of a treasure seeking type of attitude so you can find them and um, then you obviously have the bin the ball game. I haven't played this too much. I think like one or 30 minutes around it. This is a good way that you can play on certain cafes or the restaurants inside the game. I'm not sure is there like an achievement behind it or some type of like a final boss. I played quite a lot though. And um, you can get like items through this game. It's like a fun mini game, I think. And they're really good. They're good made. Um, maybe they don't really compare to Blitzball, which is my favorite um, mini game of all time in Final Fantasy games. Um, not very well received though, but was my personal favorite. Um, and let's go back into talking about the world before we go into actual the story. So here is my one of my points of criticism inside the game. So. Obviously, I already talked about like the combat, which is like very comparable to Kingdom Hearts. It's really great. Also, the way that you level up will give you AP, and this goes into the system that is very similar to Spear Grid and Final Fantasy XIII systems. And you are able to unlock certain things, which are some are exploration related, and some will give you more AP. So when you get a fish, you get one AP. And when you drive with your car long distances, you'll go get AP and same with your chocobo traveling. And then you can like upgrade teamwork and you can up like boost main stats like HP, magic, spirit, etc. And um, you can also learn abilities. So you have this sort of tech bar that goes into the battle and it goes through um, all the time. And you can upgrade it so you get more tech bar when you attack or receive damage, etc. And these will give you simply sort of like a combos with your friends on the game. And they are like very powerful attacks and you can choose different ones. And there's three bars in the game and there's level one bars, level two and level three attacks. And each of them will do different things. Some are defensive, some are single target, some are AOE and etc. And I think the customization of the characters, uh, you can choose different weapons for them. Noctis can use any weapon on the game. And the other characters are limited into two different weapon types. But everybody is able to get accessories and spells though. And there's a... This, the magic thing is a bit different in this game compared to other Final Fantasy games. So you're able to craft the spells throughout mixing uh, ice and blizzard. I mean fire, ice and thunder. And um, essentially this will give you certain combinations and you can increase potency. There are these like um like shrine well not really shrines but at least like uh, like locations where you can absorb the energy and then you can fuse it up then there are certain items that you can you can mix it, them up with potions and then this these spells may heal you among with like dealing damage and then there will be multicast and stuff like that the spells are very powerful in this game and they also do allied damage and it's a very interesting take on it and i kind of like it also and um so the combat is really good, as I already mentioned. It's very uh, enjoyable. The customization system and unlocking things is really cool. Also, like there's many things you can collect inside the game that are quest related. For example, um, when it comes to the music in the game, you can buy from shops the old soundtracks from Final Fantasy 1 to, I think, 14. Even Dissidia games are included there. Not every track, obviously, like five tracks per game or six tracks, I think. 
and it's really cool because you can listen them in the car you can also buy an mp3 player which you can like listen one when you walk around on stages or maps and it is the music itself is really good so i for one for example comparing it to the previous game that we have or two previous games Final Fantasy 12 and 13 didn't really have very good soundtracks. I think both of them had, especially 13 had a good battle music, but I think like 13 and 12 didn't really measure up to games through 7 to 10 because those four games had really, really, really good soundtracks. And I don't think they can be topped at any time whatsoever. I think they're really classicals. And um, their the Final Fantasy XV soundtrack was, it had really few good battle musics and some of the stages had really good music as well. And obviously the theme song, Florence cover on Stand By Me, I really enjoyed this one. Maybe I don't like the theme songs as much as the Final Fantasy IX and X one, but I still was think it was really good, I really liked it. And uh, the music is pretty good, it's better than, than in 13 and 12. I can't really comment on 14 because I haven't really played that one, but um, essentially it doesn't really compare to the games through 7 to 10 though. And back to going to talk about the world, which I kind of touched upon, I should have finished it. The world itself, you know, it is very open, so in the beginning you're kind of like blocked out this one zone, this like crater place where you have this um, few outposts where you are able to refuel your car, restaurants, good restaurants where you could eat. And you can also pick up like the hunting things and people who have played like 13 and 12 know this hunting system so essentially these are side quests where you kill monsters and then you go back for the reward whatever it's gold or anything like that the monsters by default don't drop gold in this game so most of the gold is earned by collecting items and treasures throughout the game and doing these hunt quests because the hunt quests give you the most gold in this game most of the other side quests do not give you gold and um, this is, um, or Gil, should I say, that's the currency in the Final Fantasy game. But um, it's a good system, but um, sometimes you need to sell some stuff. Do not sell the going coins though, because the coins can be used later on for certain exchanging it for really, really good items. So don't sell those, but there are a lot of other trash that you can sell for good gold in this game. Some of the items still can be used in like uh, crafting the spells, the aka Elementcy. So, I wouldn't be going to selling too much of the items, some other items can be also upgraded throughout the game um, with a plus sign on them, so don't sell either of those items as well. Um, and the world itself, you know, one big problem that I had with the game is more, no matter where you go, the trees look the same. There's literally the, you know, the middle zone of the game is this like um, forest slash like a swamp. And um, it is, you know, very similar looking all throughout the game. The beginning zone is more like this, like a crater place. But there is not really an open world ice place or snow place or winter place in general. There's a one through the story. There is not like a one that is like a desert. You don't really have a jungle either. You got like a mini one. So one of my pr big point of problems was the, the world kind of looked to out the same. And also there's not much cities inside the game. There's really like one, two cities that you can visit. There's four cities in total. Two of them are destroyed and you will be visiting when they're destroyed. So you can't really shop there or anything like that. And I didn't really like the cities to be honest. Um, but except the ones that you can visit and the problem with like this is when you go let's take example Final Fantasy 9 you have very light of immersion in this game you can create immersion very different ways you can have a controller um, that you know shakes when you fall down or enemy comes and that's a really good way to like a small way to create immersion obviously there is the VR you can do that in the Final Fantasy 15 I'm not sure is it available right now though it might be in DLC um, or coming in a later patch, but um, other ways is obviously the music and I think Final Fantasy 15 does a good job with that But the best way to create immersion is throughout the world and it's through these structures that we see in Final Fantasy 9 you have the the starting city Alexandria was a very remarkable type of a city because not only the city is a summon and it is also a weapon at the same time. It's a really magnificent and very iconic type of a city in the Final Fantasy world. Then you have Lindblom, then you have Claria, 
a city inside a sandstorm. Nobody has done that in any other game, TV show, or movie to my memory. That is something really, you know, unique. And then you have, speaking of memory, you have Memoria, which is the last stage in Final Fantasy IX. This, like, a place that is kind of like a, a weird, like, uh, you know, nebula type of a, where the world is upside down. You know, you have very iconic, you know, places you have in FF, uh, Final Fantasy VIII. You have... Balab Garden, Final Fantasy X, you have Spira, Xenergand, um, I mean, Luca, Beside Isles. Um, you have these very, very immersive, cool looking places in this game. And when you go with this open world setting, it really hurts the overall appeal of the. I mean, it does look good, but it, I don't think it's immersive. I mean, some of the cities, um, like Lestalum, which is one of the cities inside the game. It's a pretty cool looking town and I will remember it, it's pretty iconic. And then you have the outposts in the game where you can tank your car and go to the restaurants and take quests. But the, most of these, you know, outposts look the same. They actually use the same restaurant model like five or ten times throughout the game. And most of them just sadly look dissimilar and the woods and everything kind of looks dissimilar. And sure you have the dungeons which are unique but I don't think they are like as great level designs. And the kind of sad part is that most of the cool looking places throughout the game are true story and you kind of revisit them throughout the game. So the level design in the open world is a bit lacking. I, not maybe lacking but repetitive because you don't have these very super iconic places inside the game because I think all the games through 7 through 10 have very cool looking places. Obviously the games through 1 to 6 are true D so it's a different level of immersion obviously. But the level design was very, very iconic in Final Fantasy VII with the Midgard and etc. So one of my points of criticism is that there wasn't really a lot of cities inside the game. The dungeons were really, really weren't that cool looking. And most of the story place missions were really like cool, like the train one that I really enjoyed. That was great. But um, essentially, you know, um, the world was a bit of a disappointment in certain aspects. Of, you know, you had these huge craters and huge rock walls, which was kind of like a way to create to make it look more cooler. But you can't really, you know, okay, you can photograph them inside the game through Prompto. But essentially, you can't really experience them because you can't really like go top of them or... Well, I mean, you can't do that in the previous games either, but um, you know what I'm saying about immersion right now. And finally... The biggest point of criticism for the game is the story. And there will be some spoilers in this section. There will be, should be a message in the screen right now where to skip on the video to skip this part and get into my final thoughts. Um, the story was huge lackluster shitstorm. I mean, okay, first of all, you have to watch the King's Glaive movie to really get more background story on Luc uh, Noctis' father. And Luna Freya, I think the movie is almost detrimental to the story and they only use like five seconds of CGI from the movie in the game, which is totally a disappointment. They could have, I mean, you don't need to show like a two minute CGI scene. You could have broken down into parts. And obviously the first spoiler is, well, everybody knows this already. If you have seen the trailers, Noctis' father will die. Okay. And in the part of the game, not in the beginning of the game, so... Um, the, the events of the movie happen maybe two or three hours inside the game and Noctis finds out his dad dies. And the big problem is that Noctis, you know, he gets into a tantrum, he's really mad at this, he's really mad at his dad because he fell the city and, you know, died. But the other characters inside the cast, the other main characters, Ignis, Caladio and Prompto, you know, they weren't like that shocked. This was their home that was destroyed, utterly destroyed, and it was destroyed. Hopefully, they're half families. I mean, Gladio has a sister. She could have fucking died there, and she doesn't. He doesn't seem to be a bit worried about that, which is really, really fucking odd. Also, the refugees and the citizens who fled the city also don't seem to reflect that it was a really huge devastation that everybody was killed and the king has fallen. You know, there was no signs of depression, sadness throughout the NPCs throughout the game, 
about this event, which was really huge. And it was shown, the whole movie was summarized in like five fucking seconds where they show that the dad dies and the destruction of the city. But, you know, you have to kind of watch the movie, get into the actual, you know, background story. And obviously the anime also works. You should watch that also before the game. Um, the anime doesn't, it provides character development for the main cast. But um, aside from that, it doesn't really, you know, um, contribute that much. You don't really need to watch the anime, but it's free on YouTube, guys. So you might as well watch it. But um, the other part of the story, which going back to one of the other flaws, is that you have other main characters in the game dying randomly. So, for example, the king of Niflheim, which is shown, by the way, like two times throughout the fucking game, which is really fucking sad... And he dies, like, randomly. It's not even shown that he dies. He actually, spoiler alert, turns into a fucking demon. And this transformation is not even shown. You fight him and then he some says some fucking shit. I will be immortal. Some bullshit ass. Like, the most stereotype fucking story. Like, ba like boss quotes that you can have. And then he dies. And there's no, like, scene where it's shown that he transforms or what really happened to him. There's a one scene where he orders the enemies to really scout for and find the prince and kill him and shit. And then there's also the affiliation where um, the leaders and the lieutenants of the Niflheim army let Noctis and the group go through, like, a whole time throughout the story, like, let them off loose. Like, what the fuck is with that? I mean, that's the most random shit ever. And, um... Then you have like the other characters who escape the what is like Talbot's grandfather, who dies also randomly, and then on a cutscene they die. Oh, by the way, he got killed. No scene whatsoever showing him dying. Same goes for Luna Freya, who also dies throughout the game. I won't spoil why, but this was also not shown the actual death scene. And a lot of these, I don't know if censorship or what it is, um, but you know, not all of the deaths throughout the game you know they didn't show anything and a lot of like what happened to core i mean it's just uh it's just a mind-boggling thing obviously some some of the story loopholes might be filled in the dlc but as somebody said wise random redditor said on um i remember him saying that you shouldn't buy dlc to get full story and the full experience that that is wrong should never be story locked behind dlc or the movie or the anime in this fact and just going back and finalizing my rant about the story it's really bad it's really bad i mean the ending um it was kind of spoiled to me um, well the spoiler was a bit false but um essentially uh, even the final boss fight, it was totally fucking shit and too fucking easy to do. Obviously, there are the end game bosses, but you know, the story boss should be fucking magnificent, having different forms and shit. But no, you don't even fight with your full party on the last mission, which is, I don't know, really fucking dumb. Um, because that's what the game is really built on teamwork. And just. Um, the story, as I said, like, it took me 60 hours to, do, to play the game, but, um, the actual story might be, that if you do only the story missions, it might be only, like, you can speed run the game in 10 hours. And, honestly, like, it was very lackluster in many ways. Um, there was not really any twists inside the game, except one, which really didn't, like, oh, I didn't expect, I didn't know that, but it wasn't, like, a really huge part of the story well it was okay but um it, it just oh my god it's just i'm, I'm branding so much it's it, it's just a disappointment because the game was really perfect in a lot of the other ways this could have been nine out of ten or ten out of ten if the story was better it wouldn't have you know a simply doing adding some of the cgi from the movie would have done a lot for the game um, adding more, you know, story aspects and dialogues and more, more twists. The writing was just shit. I mean, it's just, as I said, no twists, bad character, you know, departures. Um, the ending, uh, you know, I guess it was okay. You know, endings are really hard to do. I'm gonna admit that. But essentially, you know, it, it was really a lackluster game in terms of the story. It has to be one of the worst stories. In Final Fantasy games, I mean, you had earlier a few months ago, well, two months ago, World of Final Fantasy was released, which I played also review on the channel, by the way. 
had a great story. It was aimed for a more younger audience, but it still had a better story and more twists than this game. Which is kind of sad, because this game was fucking 10 years in the making, and they still kind of like fucked it up. They fucked the story. Obviously, like, the side missions are great. There's a lot of cool dialogue between the four of the characters and the main cast. And they were good, but... Uh, it just, you know... Uh, damn. I don't, I don't want to talk about the story anymore because it really hurts me because it was such a flop. And as a closing thought, um, one thing that I forgot to mention is there's op ob obviously option to play in different languages. I played it on Japanese and later part I switched to English. And there's even chances to actually have German and pa French. Maybe I will try them as well in the latter parts when I start to play the um, end game stuff. But um, actually the Japanese audio was maybe worse than the English audio in this time. Um, the one problem that I have with the Japanese audio is in the world of Final Fantasy, out of the main ca other of the main characters, uh, Lan, you know, had the same voice actor who voices Prompto in Japanese. And this was really annoying for me. This was really annoying because this is the same guy who voices Natsu in Fairy Tale. He's in really fucking every anime. The Japanese have this problem that they circulate the same talent all the time. And because of that, it gets really boring. And also, I really don't like the female voice actors too much. I think in the English version, for example, um, Noctis maybe had a bit voice worse. And Claudio and Noctis had better voice actors in Japanese, while in English, Prompto and Ignis, I really like the Ignis voice actor for particularly. Um, Ignis and Prompto had better voice actors. And, for example, like, Cindy um, had kind of bad on both, actually. I didn't like the Southern accent, and I also didn't like the Japanese one either. But, essentially, you know, just to summarize my thoughts about the game, um, really long review, by the way, it is a great game. In terms of gameplay, if you're looking for a compelling story, this is not the game. This is not the game. I mean, obviously there are great story missions inside the game and there's some cool dialogue okay, now and then, but there is no twist. The story is absolutely predictable. Um, they're using the same model as again, where, you know, the supposedly the main evil is not the evil, kind of like the one that they did with the Seymour. And well, the Seymour tended to be like a good guy in the beginning and then turned to be bad. And then you had Kuya, where Queen Brana was kind of pitched as the main enemy and then turned about the Kuya. You had this sort of a thing, same, similar to in, in this game, in Final Fantasy 15. But, um, you know, gameplay good, you know, graphics are great, looks good. Locked at 30, fr 30 frames, but it, I didn't really notice it. Um, it's just really good game in terms of the gameplay and the side questing and how many hours you can squeeze out the game. But I, as I said, the story is really, really bad. And it was a really a shit show story. And it just wasn't really compelling at any stages. And I, they're kind of the pitching the idea that this is a brotherhood. This is, I just couldn't get into that level. I couldn't cry in the end of the game for the characters. I just wasn't able to create that relationship because I just couldn't give a fuck about the story. But um, essentially, it's a pretty good game. I do think that some of the shit DLC policies are pretty bad on this game because you can't buy the collector's edition stuff on PS Store. There is Season Pass, which I will be reviewing later on, obviously, when it comes out. And um, then there is obviously many other aspects in the game that were kind of fail, where they had that, you know, other game, um, the 3D one Final Fantasy game, King's Tale, which was also like GameStop only or some shit. I can't even buy the game in Europe. What the fuck is up with that? And as I said, one of my points of criticism, if you skip the story segment of this review, I'm going to say that um, essentially you have to watch Brotherhood movie Torrented or something. I didn't enforce that. Uh, maybe, maybe you find it somewhere, maybe you borrow a DVD or something, but watch King's Clave movie before you play the game, watch the anime if you have the time, because they offer a lot of character development, but you know, as I said, story lackluster, gameplay great, and um, thanks for watching this review, hopefully you stay tuned and subscribe for more Final Fantasy XV videos, might do a few trophy guides, and obviously we'll be reviewing all of the DLC 
and maybe doing some boss fights or something. You're and obviously a lot more that. other JRPGs that I will be viewing on this game. Probably the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy coming up next. Among other games, I am Setsuna and other releases that are coming out soon. Um, thanks for watching and sticking throughout 30 minutes of this review. But this was such a big game that I had to talk about almost all of the aspects. There were a lot of things that I left out though. Um, because it's just a really, really big game. And there's a lot of things to do in it. And, um, you know, I don't still regret the buy. And I recommend everybody buying it. It's one of the must-buy games still for, Final Fan uh, for PS4. And um, thanks for tuning in. And I will see you next time. Cheers.